welcome to the Cynthia Nyamai Show. Now, today's guest was the women representative of Taita Taveta and now is in ministry and a gospel artist, proving that to be a leader, you do not need a title or a position. All you need is to influence and have an impact on people. Let's find out a little bit more about Joyce Lee. Thank you so much, Joyce Lee, for joining us today. Being a journalist, I already have like a one-liner. I would call it from parliament to the pulpit or from politics exactly. to the pulpit. Yeah. <laughs> Yours is an intriguing story that I have been following for so long and also mm -hmm. very inspiring. And I'm happy that today we'll get the details. Exactly. But let me take you back. You were a women uh, representative mm -hmm. of... Uh, Taita Taveta, so yes. that's where you grew up. Yes. Take us back to your early um, life, uh, from early schooling to getting to where you are right now. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cynthia, mm -hmm. and um, I'm glad to be in this show. Yes. And mom had 12 children mm -hmm. in, in total. Wow. Some of them passed away, yes. some of them we met, some of them we did not we did not meet, yes. and right now we are eight. Mm -hmm. So growing up, we were like, 10, yeah. 10 of us yeah. growing up in mm. a small house, small village, yeah. a village called Mariweni. Mm. That's where I grew up. Yes. I grew up in Taita Taveta, schooled in Taita Taveta mm -hmm. throughout. Yes. And then I came to Nairobi in 1998. Mm. And uh, I really thank God because that's that's the background mm -hmm. and the foundation that God gave us. Yes. Little did we know that there was a greater future yes. for, for all of us yeah. in, the, in the family. Yeah. Yeah. And did your mom bring you up alone? Yes, she did. Yes. Most of the time she did. Mm. Um, uh, we never used to see our dad. Yeah. Our dad was then uh, an administration police. Mm -hmm. So he used to work, you know, yes. outside our village, yeah. several towns. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he can take even like five months without, you know, seeing yes. him. Yeah. So everything else, it was mom. Mom mm -hmm. took care of us. Mom took all the burden. Yeah. You know, it was it was just amazing seeing the strength of a woman mm -hmm. in, in real, yes. you know. Yes. Not that you are hearing from somebody yeah. else. Yeah. I saw it in, in my mom. Yes. Yeah. And were you always dreaming? of eventually moving to ah, Nairobi. I had big dreams. Yes. I had big dreams and most of them have come to pass. Yes. Wow. I remember um, growing up with the rest of my siblings. Yeah. I used to tell them, you know what? One day I'll build my mom a very nice house. Yes. We're going to move out from this house. In yes. fact, I will bring it down after <laughs> we, we build a nice house for, yes. for her. And yeah. that dream came to pass. Wow. I remember when I was meeting my husband mm. during the dowry negotiation. Yes. My, my mom said, um, I don't want to be paid money. Yes. I want you guys to build me a house. Yes. So my husband was like, a house that's going to be very expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you see, because it's local uh, village materials yes. are available yeah. and all that. So yeah. we built a very nice form, mm. n house for, for her. What idea. other dreams have you realized? Um, other dreams, are, actually, it's like every stage mm -hmm. that I've been in in life, yeah. I always feel like there's a better tomorrow. Mm. And uh, this is something that keeps on pushing me inside, yes. like keep on going yeah. because tomorrow it's going to be better. Yeah. So that strength inside me is what like made me to where I am right yes, now yes. because there are so many setbacks, so mm. many things that will pull me back, yes. so many things that will make me feel like, oh, this, the village, this is where I'm going to be yes. and this is it. Yes. But then every time I felt like, you know, yeah. there's, there's something yeah. ahead. I think one of the stories that I've read about you that uh, surprised me that as a leader mm -hmm. you opened up about a challenging time in your life when mm -hmm. you were trying to to get a child yes um, and I was I was wondering as I read that story why were you so open about it especially mm -hmm. where in Africa we do not talk about it mm -hmm. and you decided to even take a different option that is still new in Africa I had to do that because immediately when I had decided that I want a child yes and uh, it has to be done through IVF. Mm. It has to be done through a surrogate mother. Yes. That was the same time that I was going into politics. Yes. So I'd already even started campaigning. Mm -hmm. And you see, people have seen me with, with no pregnancy. Yes. Then all of a sudden, you have a child. Yes. People will start asking questions. Mm. So I was like, I'd rather tell my story. Yes. Because if you don't tell your story, people you yourself, will tell it for you. Exactly. In a different version. In a different version. <laughs> so yes. now I was like, because I'm going to be a leader, mm. I have to be open. Yeah. I have to tell my story. It was quite a 
both challenging and exciting yes, moment. Yes. Challenging in a way that as a woman, mm -hmm. yes. after all the you know the complications that I went through, mm. and to find out that you cannot conceive naturally, yeah. you cannot carry your own child, because at some point my uterus had to be removed, and uh, during that time it was very difficult yes. for me. Mm. Um, of course, for my husband too, because yeah. I kept on putting pressure that yeah. I want a child. Yeah. And her coming from a, a previous marriage yes. before, mm. he already had children. Yeah. So he kept on saying, but we have children. Yeah. Why do I do need a child? Mm. But you see a woman, you want a child your of your own. Yes. You want somebody that, you know, later on, mm. you, can, you can actually say, you know, there's somebody who can take care of me when I'm yes. old. Yeah. We have so many IVF clinics in the mm. country, mm. but then we don't have regulations yeah. towards the same. Yes. So each clinic, if it's time, if, if it's, it's about, uh, you know, pricing mm. and everything else, they just do it, on, yes. you know, on their own. Yeah. And then it's also very expensive mm. yeah. for a normal couple. Yeah. Like, it costs you know, more than $10,000 yes, at the list. Yes, it does. Yeah. So the reason why we also had a bill in Parliament yeah. with the uh, Honorable Mili Odiambo yes. is to make sure that if this is the technology that's helping people who yeah. can conceive naturally, mm. so can we have it regulated and can we have it, you know, affordable yeah. for other people mm. and accessibility also, like it, with hospitals in the counties and yeah. in the villages, mm. can someone walk to a, you know, infertility clinic mm. and then they get assisted right there yes. without coming to Nairobi or yeah. any yeah. other bigger uh, yes. towns. Yeah. So, I, I had to tell my story, yeah. my own way. Yes, and did shortly after that you decided to mm -hmm. run for political yes, office. Yes, I did. Why, why did you make that uh, career choice then? So, um, like I said, sometimes your steps are ordered mm -hmm. by God. It started when um, my husband had decided we had mm -hmm. gone, you know, to visit my brother in yeah. Yandangi. Yeah. And when he got there, it's like this place is beautiful. This is where we're going to build our retirement yes. home. I'm like, <laughs> no yeah, way. Yeah, Wundanya is you know? beautiful. <laughs> it is beautiful. Yes, the hills. But for me, coming from Taita, yeah, yeah. grew up in Taita, I'm like, my dreams were like to own a beach house, yes. you know, go and live in Mombasa or <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah. So when he said we're going to build a house in Wundanya, mm. at some point, I had to find my own peace. Yeah. So I told God, if you bring me here, then let it be with yes, a purpose yes. and for a reason. Yeah. Because this is where I grew up mm. and there must be a reason why you're bringing me back yes, here. Yes. So when we built our house, we started like doing community projects. Mm. Uh, it is the community projects mm. that caused the people now to start yes. pushing me to go into politics. Yeah. There was no time that I ever dreamt yeah. that one time I'll be in politics. Mm. There's a, a big project that we had done with the dairy farmers yes. in Taita Taveta. Mm. And um, we brought it to a level where, you know, it was sustainable. Yeah. They could pay their own fees mm. for their children. Mm. They could have medical cover. Mm. It was just amazing. Yeah. So it's through that that now people started pushing me to go into politics. Into politics. And when the voices were many, I sat down, I was like, why not? Yes. I can do this. I want to find out a little yes. bit more about the challenges that you faced mm -hmm. um, as a woman. Mm -hmm. But we need to take a short break. And okay. when we come back, we find out more about how she even moved from politics into the pulpit. That is coming up shortly. Welcome back to the Cynthia Nyamai Show. We've been talking to Joyce Lay and her story. She calls it from grass to grace. I call it from politics to the pulpit because of even your ministry exactly. in music. Yeah. But before we get that to that, uh, so you decide to run for office, political office. What mm -hmm. are some of the things that surprised you about women in politics? First of all, mm -hmm. You know, the moment like you're okay, you're living your life, yes. you, you, you're not even thinking about going into politics, yes. everybody's your friend. Yeah. You know, everybody talk nice <laughs> yes. about you. Yes. And uh, everyone wants to be with you. Yeah. And just normal life. Mm -hmm. But the moment you declare yeah. that you want to run for office, yeah. there's so much that women go through. Yeah. And I always feel like, you know, men just have it so easy. Yes. Because for women, mm -hmm. they start looking at you from your. Yeah. You know, your toes yes. to your hair. Yes, to what you're what wearing. What kind of high, you know, yes. hairstyle yes. You're, you're, you're having. Mm. I remember my first meeting, yes. I had a very nice gold anklet. Yeah. And the meeting I went, mm. the women were like, 
Mm-hmm. I can say it in Kiswahili. Yeah. Sasa huyu amevaa hizi mm. nini za miguu. Yeah. <laughs> Takuaje kiongozi, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I remember I had to remove it yeah. in that meeting yeah. and I lost it since then I didn't even know yeah. where I get yeah. it. So they start, you know, this the scrutinization that mm. goes in. Yeah. I think it's too much yeah. by the way. Yeah. Because it's not my face that's coming. Exactly. You know, to lead or your anklet. It's not my anklet. Yeah. It's not my hair. Yes. It's not whom I'm married to. Yes. And um, if we could leave those petty mm-hmm. because to me they are very petty. Yeah. If we could leave them aside, mm. we'll definitely have a woman president right now. Yes. But the issue is the same same women that mm-hmm. we we are expecting them to hold our hands, yes. to support us and to even guide us. Yes. Are the same people that will be used to tear you apart yes and um apart from from other financial challenges mm-hmm. because you know men come into politics when the politics when they're already set yes they have their money mm. but as for women it's the first time we're we're going into politics yes. first time you're trying yeah. out yeah. everything yeah so financial challenge yeah. was also the biggest biggest yes. challenge yes. that, that I, yeah. I faced and it's also easier for men yeah. because when they're fundraising it's easier for exactly. them to call their colleagues very true. Uh, and they control their money and they are our economy true. in many yeah. ways yeah so it's easier for them to call their mm-hmm. boys let's mm-hmm. raise money yeah. uh, and within as a compared to women i know yes so uh, financial challenge was mm. was another challenge mm. cyberbullying is, yes. is another challenge yeah. and you know it's bigger for for women yeah it's tiny for men yes. but it's so wide mm. this 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 people keep on talking about you know african values yes. i keep on saying who wrote these yes. african values yeah. and how comes they were wrote for only women exactly and they was, keep on changing exactly yes. was it to put the women down yes. was it to make sure that the women never raise their heads and yes. never you know like take leadership mm, position mm, mm. because every time you know the way you're dressed oh that's not african yes, yeah. that's not you know mm. and we like you know what yeah. let's move yeah. from those petty petty issues yes. let us look at um, you know issue based politics yeah. if you're coming in as a leader let's let's look at your vision mm. your ideologies yeah. you know how you're dressed whom you're married to yes. whom you're sleeping with yeah. at night it does not matter That's true. really it doesn't matter mm. so those are some of the challenges that i faced yeah. and i remember because i i normally have my my small body just like it is right yes. now so um, then people are like no 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 she's too small yeah. you know this is a women <laughs> position we need big women yes. i literally had to put on weight you wow. should, you should look, <laughs> look at my photo maybe yes. those are part of the photos yes. that i've seen yeah. during my first campaign yeah, i was yeah. so chubby yeah. like i had to look like kimama like oh, mama really? kind of mama so that's you a know. real representation Imagine of women, women. <laughs> I guess people did not really understand yeah. that position yes. because affirmative action was to give a platform yeah. for women to come in mm. you know learn uh, the how abouts of you know politics yes. get to have the confidence mm. that maybe we don't have out there yes. so that now we can grow ranks mm. you know yes. and uh, people thought, thought now we were coming to represent only the women yeah so you have to look like yes. the women yes. themselves, you know, <laughs> funga kitambara, yeah, yeah. put on long, long dresses, dresses and yes. all that. Mm. So um, I thank God because things are changing yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, I took a lot of time to do mm. civic education yeah. the moment I got elected mm-hmm. for them to understand what this office of, is, yeah, is yeah, about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And what are some of the things that you are proudest of that you achieved mm-hmm. when you were the woman representative of Taita Taveta? Um, I can say... In, in parliament mm-hmm. side, um, in terms of legislation, yes. actually I learned very fast. Yeah. I, I picked up very fast, um, especially being behind the shadows of mm-hmm. Honorable Mili or them, but actually she, she's like the person who was like motivating me, yes. you know, guiding me and, mm-hmm. and teaching me stuff. Yes. And uh, on that side, I picked up so well. Yeah. I remember I even got the, an award, the yes. Zalendo Award, yes. you know, from the mm. most promising legislator yes. in, in, in the house mm. because immediately I had uh, motions yeah. that had uh, brought to parliament. Mm. My first motion that passed very well mm-hmm. was uh, appealing to the government yes. to start um, uh, translation yeah. of our laws yes. into Kiswahili, mm. especially very important laws like marriage law yes. because marriage is about everybody, even mm. those who didn't go to school. Yeah. We have beautiful laws, but most of the people do mm. not understand yeah. the laws that are there for mm. them, yeah. especially the women, yeah. the mamambogas, yes. you know, yeah. and um, the children, mm. the children law. Yeah. Everybody needs to understand. Another one that had 
proposed that was still a draft before I left mm -hmm. is on domestic workers bill. Yes. And domestic workers, I was more focusing on the local domestic workers. Because mm. most of the time, yes, we complain about the international domestic workers. Yeah. But then have we dealt with the same issue in yeah. our own country? Yes. Because this is the largest employment sector that has not been regulated. Yeah. Some of the house helps, I mean, the stuff that they go through, mm. it's just, you know, a yeah. pity. Yes. Some of them don't have good places to sleep. They're not given offs and leaves and, you know, even for their medical, uh, their welfare, yes. for example. Yes. And uh, it's, it's so sad. Yeah. And this was covering not just the, the people who work in the house, mm -hmm. but the Ascaris, yes. you know, the gardeners mm. and, and everybody else. Yes. So my, my aim was to regulate this sector yeah. and to make sure that the people who are working in, in homes mm. are taken care of, their yeah. rights are taken care of, mm. you know. Mm. Um, that one we, we took it to, because it's a stage, every, yeah. every time you want to bring bill <coughs> it is a long long stage mm. before it comes now it becomes an act yes. so we, i left it at the committee level the yeah. committee that's in charge of uh, mm. labor and, and all that yes i i once uh, mm -hmm. read an article uh, yeah. where you said that later on mm -hmm. uh, you had been uh, approached yes. for a position as a deputy governor but oh, uh, yeah. you said you were not interested. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. also in the interview, uh, it said that uh, you felt betrayed, yes. that something happened mm -hmm. uh, and you felt like you don't mm -hmm. want mm -hmm. uh, to be in politics because you were betrayed. What had happened? Um, in, in politics, comparing to where mm -hmm. I am right now, what yes. you're calling pulpit. Yes. You know, um, honesty is, is number one. Yeah. I'm a very honest person. Yeah. I speak the truth. Mm. I speak the way it is, yeah. and you know, I, I don't sugarcoat. Mm. And um, you find that the moment you like when when I say the moment you're mentioned for a certain position, yes, your close friends become your enemies. Yeah. So to me, that was like, why should we go through this mm -hmm. in order for us to, to yes. be in leadership yeah. position? Mm -hmm. Because leadership, like we keep on saying, it's given by God. Yeah. But then if I have to stab you. Mm for me to get to where I want to be. Yes. You know, sometimes we say we, we support women, mm -hmm. but then we are choosy yeah. at how we are supporting these women. Yes. So on one side, I'm supporting Cynthia. Mm. On the other side, I'm stepping on Joanne. Yes. I'm stabbing her. Yes. I'm, I'm making sure that she does not rise. Mm. So that's, there's no honesty in, in there. Yeah. There's no like true, true love. Yeah. Because that's even, that's what the Bible calls, yes. you know, us to, to yeah. make sure that we have that yeah. true love. And do you think it's possible to be in politics uh, and, and have integrity or even be born again? Is yes. it possible? It is possible. Mm. It is possible. And actually, this brings in a different topic yes. where the church mm -hmm. has to start talking about yes. leadership positions. Yeah. If I'm in charge of public friends, yes. and here I worship God, mm. definitely I cannot say that I'm, I'm keeping this money for myself, yes. and yet I, I fear God. Yeah, that that yeah. one cannot happen. But you, you've gone through campaigns. Yes. Do you think if someone actually went out and spoke the way you're speaking, instead of going out and dishing money and telling people we're going to take so and so down, mm -hmm. that you would actually have a chance to win I, an election. I wish I could send you some of my campaign messages. Yes. In some places, people used to say, are you preaching? <laughs> you know, it sounds like you're preaching because yes. when, you, when you're speaking the truth, mm. the truth is what is closer to God. Yes. And um, I go true. down even like giving them a breakdown. Yes. Do you know if I come here mm. and ask you for a, for a vote and yeah. you ask me for money, mm. that's a transaction. Yes. And then I tell them, now calculate what I've given you mm. to the five years that yes. I'll be in parliament yeah. and the salary that I'll be earning yes. and, and see how little yeah. you, know, you, you spend to, to sell your soul. Mm. And, and now that you're not in active uh, mm -hmm. politics and mm -hmm. you got into it to serve the people, yes. how are you serving them? I'm going to be the voice, the voice of the voiceless, yes. the voice of the poor, mm. the voice of the orphans, mm. the voice of the widows, in general, the voice of the people. Yes. So I'm not going to be quiet because being in leadership, I have enough experience mm. to, to know what a leader is supposed to be. Yes. I'm going to push on accountability. I'm going to push on people involvement and engagement in leadership mm -hmm. so that the vacuum that we normally have yeah. between a leader and a voter, mm -hmm. we need to to gap, you yeah. need to bring it, you know, to a level yes. where we work together. Yes, yes. Because as a leader, when you are picked to lead the people, mm -hmm. how can you work alone? Yes. And yet it's the people who brought you on board. But because of lack of 
platforms mm. that we need to create yes. as a government yes. to make sure now there's involvement, mm. there's engagement from, let's say even from everything else that's being discussed at the county assembly. Yes. Before it gets there, can mm. it start from the people? Yes. Can the voice of the people be heard? Mm. And mm. the only way that their voices can be heard yeah. is when we give them an opportunity mm -hmm. to, to gain information and yeah. to gain knowledge. Yes. That way now they can sit and even question and ask, you know, if you're in charge of our money, mm. how much money has come into our county? Yeah. How much money is going into such and such development mm. projects? Mm. And how can we be in charge of our development? Yes. Because what I, what I foresee in the future, and this is the reason why the second time I ran for Senate, because I, I wanted to see how can the people be uh, benefiting from the money that has been taken down to the counties yes. under devolution. Mm. Because the same, same procurement system that's being used at the national you know, level is the same that's in the, in the counties. Yeah. And how they corrupt that uh, uh, system mm -hmm. is to benefit themselves yeah. and not the people. Mm. So I, I want this devolution to go to a point where if it's a project that's being done, for example, let, let's pick a name like career core people. Yes, yeah. If it's 50 million, mm -hmm. then let that 50 million mm -hmm. go around to the people who live in career core. Yes. If it's a tender to build mm -hmm. a, a structure, let it be taken by the people who are in career core. Yes. Let us develop the, the youth groups, the women groups, you know, to be able to start taking this tender, to be able now to see money coming down, trickling yes. down to the last person. On the, on the ground. Yes. Yes. So Let, I'll be very loud on that. Yes. Um, I even have a, a platform that I've created mm -hmm. called Conversation Center, yeah. where now we'll take it to the villages and uh, engage with the youth. Mm. My, my passion is more on the youth yeah. side. Yeah. We can, the youth can lead these conversation centers to a point where they become like permanent public participation for yes, us. Yes, 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 yeah. Civic education is very it important. Is. It is. Let's go now to your music career. Yes, yes. How did that start? <laughs> Amazing, right? You didn't yes, see that I coming. Didn't see that come. I just saw it. I just saw it on your page. I was yes. like, I didn't know you had this talent. Exactly. And you had this dreams. So growing up, yeah. we, we grew up in church. The whole family. Mm. Even in our house where we used to to live in the village, yes. my dad had given land to the church. Yes. So we grew up in church. Mm. I started singing very early, you know, the choir singing and yeah. all that. But in the choir, there was no time that I thought like one day mm. I'll be recording yes, music. Yeah. I'll be the one standing on the platform, you know, uh, worshipping God. Mm. That never occurred to yeah. me. Little did I know that that was hidden inside me. Yeah. And the reason why it was hidden is because I was not taking time mm. to find out what yeah. my purpose is. Yeah. What I've recorded so far, it's five. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are audios. There's only one video that I released recently. Yes. But the ones that have not been recorded, mm. they're close to 50. Wow. It is just amazing. And the way it comes is just during my prayer moment. Yes. When I'm worshiping God, mm. that's when I receive uh, mm. the songs. Yes. I cannot like sit down and write mm. a song. Mm. I cannot. Yeah. Everything else comes from the Holy mm. Spirit. Mm. Yeah. I've been enjoying your music. And just before we close, <laughs> yes. just give us at least two lines of okay. one of your favorite songs. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of my favorites will be um, this, this song that I, I sang, Exalting God, mm. you know, uh, Nani Kamawewe, mm. like because there's nobody that can be compared yes. to God. Mm. And um, maybe I can sing it. Please, please. that's what we are all <laughs> waiting for. <laughs> Just before we close. Ni nani wakufanani shwana wewe Ni nani wakulingani shwana wewe Hakuna Wakufana ni shwana wewe hakuna wow. mtengeneza majira hmm. mungu wanya kati zote wakufana ni na wewe hakuna subscribe YouTube channel. <laughs> we will Joyce Lee. That is Joyce Lee. Subscribe yeah. to her YouTube channel. Exactly. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us today and for sharing your life Amen. and even your voice. Exactly. One Thank line you. that I got today is she's the voice of the voiceless, and you do not need an office or even a name to lead people. That's my take 
for today. Remember, you can share with us or suggest for us guests that you would like to see on this show. You can send it to my Twitter handle, which is Cynthia Nyamai. Until next time, have a good week. <laughs>